preparations for crossover part five and the subtopic is with the ark versus without the ark with the ark versus without the ark praise the name of jesus what does it mean to be with the ark and when you don't have the ark what happens we are going to read the simple scriptures that you know the key verse has been joshua chapter 3 verses 13. may god bless the reading of his word Amen. in jesus name Amen. and it came to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear that bear the ark of the lord the lord god of all the earth shall rest in the waters of jordan that the waters of jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above and they shall stand upon a heap. God is saying the priests will carry the ark of the covenant and immediately they touch as they carry immediately their feet touch Jordan it shall be cut off and the waters will flow upstream instead of flowing downstream. That is the word of God. That is God saying. That is not Joshua. That is God saying to Joshua what will happen. Uh -huh. God is prophesying to them. And he is telling them. Immediately the feet of a priest that are bearing the Ark of the Covenant will touch the waters of Jordan. The waters flowing upstream, downstream will be cut off. And they will flow upstream. Instantly on the spot. Immediately. Their feet touch. That is exactly what happens. If you read down there, immediately they came with the ark. According to the prophetic word, immediately they came with the ark, and the feet of the priest that bear the ark touched Jordan. The waters cut off. So this was not scientific. This was not biological. This was not an act of nature. It was an act of God. It's a prophetic one coming to pass. Amen. Because it is immediately the feet. Of a priest touch will be cut off exactly that is what happened because of the power of the ark of the covenant praise the name of jesus Amen. now let's go to first kings chapter 13. first kings chapter 13. there we will see when you have the ark when you don't have the ark <laughs> what shall happen to you when you have the ark and when you lose it this scripture will show us what will happen to you when you have the ark and to show us what will happen to you when you don't have the ark before I read chapter 13 I want to tell you that that scripture that chapter is divided into two sections <laughs> praise God Amen. praise the name of Jesus Amen. section 1 shows us the confrontation between the altar of God and that of idols. That is the first confrontation, the first section of chapter 13 of 1 Kings. It shows us the confrontation of altars. Battle between altars. Altars fighting. Hey, praise God. Amen. We see altars fighting. And even today, there are authors that are fighting. The authors of your home, the authors of God, they are in constant confrontation. Praise God. Amen. So we see authors confronting each other here. Each author with a priest, each author with a representative, each author with a, the person who is running. And section two shows us the repercussions of the roosting the ark. Uh, Somebody there was the ark. Somebody there was the presence. So that is what chapter 13 of Acts uh, of First Kings chapter 13 shows us. Let's read so that you may understand. And uh, the picture is beautifully painted for us. The picture in First Kings chapter 13 is beautifully painted for us to see it in black and white. Hey, praise God. Amen. The picture of 
First King chapter 13, confrontation of authors and the repercussions of using the author is beautifully painted so that you can understand in black and white. Amen. Amen. You want us to read it now so that you can understand, understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay, verses 1 of chapter 13, verse 1. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord. And to Bethel and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Bethel. You remember Bethel? Bethel is a place where Jacob was. He slept there at night, the Bible says, and he saw a lander from heaven touching the ground at night. And angels were ascending and descending. That place was called Luz. Luz. L-U-Z. But after this encounter, encounter Beth, uh, uh, Jacob said, this is nothing but the house of God. From now, it shall be called Bethel. So Bethel is the house of God. That is the meaning of Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. Of God. It is a place where he had an encounter. And Jacob said, if you will go with me, if you shall bless me, if you shall go with me, where I am going, he was headed to a rabbi's place, where he would be a slave and a servant. If you shall be with me, give me clothes to wear and food to eat, I will return back here. Praise the name of Jesus. Bethel. To Bethel. And thank you. And exactly when he was very prosperous, Jacob was very prosperous in Laban's house. And he had forgotten. Because many times when you become prosperous, you forget. You forget the vows. You forget what you say. You forget what you promise God. He forgot the Lord appeared to him. And said, I am the God of Bethel. Uh, where I... <laughs> where you first hope that you had an encounter with me. Do this. You promise that if I bless you, you will go back. It is time to go back. And offer a sacrifice. Now we see now Jacob going back into Bethel. This is the same Bethel. Praise the name of Jesus. After many years, many centuries, we see that the kingdom of, of Israel split into two. The, the, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. One was called the kingdom of Judah. The other one was the kingdom of Israel. In Israel, they had two altars of God. Because Jerusalem was very far from them. So they had two altars. They put one altar in Dan and another one in Bethel. That is history. That is not theology. That is history. That's books. You can read it. It's not theology. It's not deep theology. You can read it. One at Dan, one at Bethel. This is the Bethel we are talking about. Okay. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now in Bethel, somebody decides to desecrate the altar. We, do, we see two priests there. One is Jeroboam, the king of Israel. And the other priest is the man of God. A named man of God from Judah. You see now there are two altars there. That's a confrontation I'm speaking about. There is the altar of Jeroboam. There is the altar of the man of God. By the word of God, he left Judah and came to Bethel. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And he comes there. And by the time he arrives... Jeroboam is about to offer a evil sacrifice in the order. <laughs> so, beyond there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of God out of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Exactly when he was about to offer a wicked sacrifice unto God's Jeroboam is a wicked king. And to idols, the man of God arrives. You should arrive before they offer sacrifices. Jehovah God, amen. You don't allow them to offer. Amen. If they offer a sacrifice, it is fatal for you. It is dangerous for you. It is, it is, it is dangerous for you. It is deadly for you to allow them to offer a sacrifice. Don't allow them to offer a sacrifice. Amen. Offer it first. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Jeroboam, I mean the, the man of God, he said exactly as the man is about to offer a wicked sacrifice. Don't give them time to offer sacrifices. Amen. Do not allow them to pray on Friday before you pray. That's what I'm saying. 
If they pray before you pray in the altar, you are doomed. When the devil offers a sacrifice before you offer it, it is very hard to undo it. Very hard to undo it. It's very hard to undo it. That's why Jeroboam, before he offers, the man arrives. And he begins to attack. There's a confrontation. There's a battle going on. Hallelujah. But why, why are they? Why is there a battle? The man of God does not want this man to offer the sacrifice. There are some sacrifices you should not allow the devil to offer. Father, they will not Never them. allow the devil to offer some sacrifices. They are fatal. They cannot be undone. They cannot be undone. There are some sacrifices when the devil receives them. They cannot be undone. It is very hard. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Do not allow them to offer a sacrifice before you do. Yes. Yeah, that is why by the word of God and urgency, because the king's matter requires yes. haste. The man of God is sent quickly to counter an evil sacrifice that is about to be offered. Uh -huh. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Before they offer those children on them on the altar of the devil to kill them, to burn them, we will confront them. Amen. That is why we are here. That is why we are born again. That is why we are anointed. That is why we are priests. Amen. To counter their sacrifices. We have to counter them. Yeah, my goodness. We, we have to counter their sacrifices. Yes. Their sacrifices are fatal if they are offered. Do not allow them to give their money. Do not allow them to, to, to sacrifice an animal. Do not allow them do not allow them to, to, to do an accident there. Go and confront them because if they do, some people will die and it is an, it cannot be undone. Some changes are irreversible. Irreversible. This is powerful. That is why the man of God is standing next there and he confronts him. Look at what he says in verses 2. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, Oh, altar. Oh, altar. This is what the Lord. Thus is the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David by the name of Josiah. And upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high priest. Look at it. He does not allow this man to talk. He does not give him a chance to speak. He begins to attack the altar. <laughs> that is why you should have the Ark of the Covenant all the time. The presence of God all the time. Don't give them time to speak. Before Jeroboam opened his mouth to speak, the man of God attacked the altar. Oh, altar! Oh, altar! He began to attack. And he says, by the word of God, there is a man that shall be born by the name of Josiah from the house of Ahab. Hey, begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. From the house of David. Praise Jesus. There is a Josiah. If you read about Josiah, Josiah was a godly king. He came. Before he finished that, he said again, and he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is a sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. The man of God is talking fire. 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 Up to this time, Jeroboam has said not a word. Yeah. <laughs> Jeroboam has not spoken. Oh, yeah. Now he prophesies to the altar that this. Wicked King Jeroboam is standing on. Praise God. Amen. Jeroboam has not said spoken. Why are you around the devil to speak? Why? Why do you give the devil time to speak to you? Why? He gave a sign. This is the sign which the Lord, first Kings chapter 13, verse 3, has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be read. The man of God prophesied the doom of the altar of Jeroboam. You must use your mouth very well. Uh -huh. Prophesy against all the authors that speak against you. Uh -huh. All the authors that are speaking, that's a confrontation I'm speaking about. Yeah. The man saying, Look, this is a sign. This altar shall be rent into two, and it shall come up as ashes. It shall be blown away. It shall be no more there. Ah, that is now the time Jeroboam said, You are going too far, young man. The altar shall be rent into two. The two shall be spread apart. Wow. And the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Man of God is prophesied. 
Jeroboam said, young man, I am the king. You don't seem to understand. My friend, it does not matter whether they are kings or not. Amen. Does it not matter? Amen. This is not the battle of kingship. This is the battle of rights. This is a spiritual battle of rights. It matters your rank. I may not be a king, but I have a higher rank than you as a king. Amen. Yeah. So the man said, you are going too far. Actually, what is your name? What is your name? What? Your name again? Just a minute. You are going too far. And you know, this man is a king. So he looks around. He looks around. Of course, when the king stands up, many soldiers rise up to eat him. Yeah. And they are waiting for the next command. And he says, seize him. Oh God. That's what the Bible says. Can you read the Bible? And it came to pass when the king did open hand the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in the bed, the altar of verse 4, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold of him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not put it back again to him. The king said, You are going too far, young man. Even I don't know your name. The man of God from Judah. You don't have a name. Now, Kusimama to him, as Kalukas Mamanaka Sema, since this man capture him. Mokono Ikakauka, the hand of a king. He was not able to pull it back. He can pull it back. He can pull it back. Hallelujah. This is a battle of others. This is a battle of men with the ark. Another one without the ark. When you have the ark of the covenant, there are some battles you will definitely win, even without a lot of stress. Amen. The man of God did not prophesy anything to the hand of a king. But now that you pointed to the ark of the covenant, your hand cannot come back. <laughs> Seize him. The hand stayed still. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. The order the Bible says, look at the fulfillment of what the man of God has just prophesied. The order was also rent as the hand is still stiff. Are you looking at that? Can you put your hand like that? Eh? Come on, and don't pull it back. <laughs> I command your hand to be like that until I tell you. The hand of the king was like that. As it was like that, the Bible says, the altar was also red and ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given to the word of the Lord. As the hand was still still, the altar was red into two. So, the Bible says, as if the hand was still still, the altar red into two, split into two, and the, the dust, the ashes, shut out according to the word of God. Hold your hand like that tight. Then the king answered and said to the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man, <laughs> and the, is your hand still tight? I'm looking at your hands. As straight and tight. <laughs> and the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored unto him again became as it was before. I entreat the hand of God now in the name of Jesus. May your hand come back. May your hand come back now. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. That is what the man of God is. <laughs> Give him a hand clap. Give him a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The hand was tight. The he said, man of God. Man of God. They will call us men of God. Let them insult us now. Let them call us fake preachers. Let them call us fake apostles. Let them continue insulting. One of these days, they will call us man of God. By that time, they will be on their knees. Their hands will be stiff. Their businesses will be stiff. Not going anywhere. Their marriage is tight. They cannot go anywhere. Anything about them is stuck. And they shall call us man of God, apostle, Frank. Can you please pray to your God because of my business, because of my family, because of my home, because of my blessing, because of my healing? Na kuambia kuhusu the man of God from Judah and Jeroboam, their hands will be tight. They will not be carried the ark of the covenant. 
kuna wakati utafika watu hawataacha kutuita shakahora sisi wote ah wajana hii makanisa shakahora wajana nazo watawacha watawacha wenyewe mikono zao zitakauka nyumba zao zitakauka biashara zitakauka watafunga watu ite men of god si shakahora tena by the time the ark of the covenant is manifesting wala tuita prophet wala tuita apostle praise the name of jesus because we have the ark of the covenant we carry the ark that is the power that is in you when you carry the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant will fight for you amen the ark of the covenant will speak for you amen when others are dry you will pray for them and their hands will come back na hawata cheza na wewe tena they will not joke around with you again praise the name of jesus Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And the, the king said as the man of God, come home with me. Look at that now. Now something again is about to happen. Watch. Uh-huh. He came to Judah by the word of God. Yes. In the word of God there were about three instructions. In the word of God. We will read down there. One, you are going to Bethel to speak against the altar where Jeroboam is about to offer sacrifice. Number two, when you are finished Go back. No, number two, do not eat and drink there or on the way. Instruction number two. Instruction number three, do not return the same way you came. Three instructions. Huh? It was not just go and prophesy, no. It was a bountiful of instructions. Go prophesy. Do not eat or drink. Listen to me. And do not come go back the same way you came three instructions now temptations are about to arise why the devil hates what has just happened the devil does not like what has just happened whenever you use the ark of the covenant make sure you understand that the devil does not like it he hates when you carry the presence he hates when you read the word of god the devil does not like it when you are reading the bible The devil does not like it when you say I will fast tomorrow. You can be sick today so that you don't fast tomorrow. The devil hates when you carry the presence of God. He hates it. Now, this is a temptation. What is a temptation? The king said in verses 7, uh, this is a king. Remember this is a king asking him. This is not a normal man who is going to he is calling the, you to the house to give you some tea and mandazi. No, this is a king. He says a king said the man of God, I am happy because now you have healed my hands. Thank you so much. Come home with me and refresh thyself and I will give you a reward. Yani I will give you a seed. You are a man of God. I will give you an offering. I will refresh you. You will eat to your fill. You came walking. You will go back on Mercedes. Oh man of God, you are anointed. Wow. You are going back on Actually I will order my people to drive you home on siren you want a car or you want to be carried by car or you want to fry i can give you my personal chopper you thank you for restoring my hand that is a temptation and that is how the devil speaks come <laughs> come, come 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 he does not care what he will give you in exchange of the ark he doesn't care ah in exchange of the ark what? if you have the presence of god yes. do you remember joseph yes. do you remember joseph yes. joseph is a slave. Don't you know that he was a shepherd boy and a house boy who loved him? Who loved Joseph? A house girl? No. A beautiful woman who was the wife of the boss. The first lady. The first lady. That's the word. Is the Bible says for a long time he desired to have him for a long time. Last And one day he said never is enough come and he said live life nimekuonyesha matendo na vijana wengine wakionyesha matendo ni kama hawajui wacha niwaambie maana vijana wengine sijui ni bubu they don't see i don't i'm trying to to give to give some mini skirt they can't see i begin to i try to open my whatever this young man pretends he's not seeing i try to make makeup he's pretending my nails she only let me tell him on the face i want to have you as my boyfriend uh, <laughs> praise god when we read the word of god we read it very fast it was not that fast 
<laughs> it was not that fast. <laughs> and Joseph said, I cannot sin against my God. Hallelujah. He said, today you will sleep with me. He took hold of a jacket. He read the jacket. He ran out. That is where trouble began. As you try to keep the Ark of the Covenant, there will be many troubles in your life. Eh? Many troubles in your life. If he's read to you that woman, you would have been promoted <laughs> immediately on the spot. You would have been given another house. He could have said, I don't want you to stay here. My husband is here. I want to keep you outside. We have a big house in Runda. I give it to you. I'll be visiting you there every weekend. Wow. Joseph rejected. You must reject anything that takes away the presence of God from your life. Amen. Reject it. Amen. I command all the young men to say no in the name of Jesus. Amen. Man. How many young men will say no? <laughs> and the man of God said unto the king, Look at another mistake. When you are about to lose the presence and the ark of God, you begin to tell people your secrets, which is wrong. The king, the man said, is it verse 8? Uh, God said to, uh, and the man of God, and the man of God said unto the king, if thou wilt give me half of thine house, I will not go in with thee. And the man is here. Are you seeing that? He was not supposed to go ahead and say everything. That was supposed to be a full stop, but he put a comma. That's the problem. You are supposed to put a full stop and say to him, even if you give me half of your kingdom, I will not go with you. Full stop. But now he puts a comma and he says, neither will I eat any bread nor drink water in your praise. He puts another semicolon there. The man does not want to stop talking. Be quiet at times. For so, as this nine he now begins to give his secret. For so, it was charged me by the word of the Lord saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way thou camest. He tells this man the, the, secret, the secret why he is able to make the hand tight and bring it back. Why are you able to work out miracles? signs and wonders he gives the secret he gives the secret <laughs> do you remember another man who gave a secret do you remember another man who gave a secret yes. who is the name samson. samson oh sam samson samson says if i am tied with the ropes my hands and my feet i will become weak as any other man the liar tied the hands and he said prisoners are coming and then where oh, yeah? he tears the ropes like nothing and say, You are not my babe, you are not my sweetheart, you are a liar, you are a cheat. You are a cheat, <laughs> you are a cheat. cheat because you are not telling me the truth. And he tells him another one, then it doesn't work again until the that time. Now, this time we are told that Delilah left the kitchen. Come on. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm preaching the word of God. Don't look at me like this. You're looking at me as it's suspicious. I'm saying he left the house, he left the bedroom, he left the sitting, he left the living room. He came next to, the, to Samson, the mighty anointed man of God, and slept on his laps. Be careful when a woman comes there. Who is not your wife? When he arrives at your laps, you are powerless. That is where she was right and then speaking soft words. Be careful of women who are not loud. Be careful. Women who speak very soft words. And now looks at Samson. Hi, babe. How are you? I keep on in on Tangana every city yesterday. Sure, is the quiz on any how near and be a query, Nina Kuris and Mambona in Tanganya too. No, because I'm up to Manu to go to Nakuta Tori Boy. I come one be a paramis, the Nakaya Wapi, many a beer, many a beer mean a camper. You have told me the ropes, you told me the ropes. But why are you lying to me? And Samson now was overcome by love, which is not love, his last. And Samson says, If anybody cuts my hair, 
He tells her the truth. He tells her the truth. And the Bible says, if you read your Bible, the Bible says, at this time round, the liar says, now he has told me the truth. <laughs> that is the truth. That is the truth. Because since I came, I've never seen him cut his hair. That is the truth. And he gave him uh, Muchere. Okay. Muchere, you see a Muchere. You know Muchere? No, people in the church, they don't understand what Muchere is. But uh, I am speaking about those concussions. When men drink, when men take it, they strip forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> that is what was given to this man. He stripped. And the, the, after Hakuan Araka, he shaved the hair very fast. Slowly, not in a hurry. The man can wake up the day after tomorrow, no problem, do it. Shaved it. And then, Mandawa Sikaisha Kwa Kitwa. Jamaka Amuka. I can't do it. You know what? Philistines are coming. Trying to raise up. He thought the ark was next. He looked for the ark. No ark. No presence. That is how they came and captured him. And the first thing is to remove the eyes, the vision. You will never see who is killing you and who is torturing you again. The devil is after what is so precious in your life. Nothing is as precious in your life as the presence of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. The man we are looking at is called the man of God from Judah. He says, even if you give me half of your kingdom, half of your wealth, I cannot come back and eat and drink. For I have been commanded by the word of God not to eat, not to drink, and not to go by the same way I came. The man of God is about to lose the ark. Oh, I feel for him. I feel for the man of God. Look at it. So, he went another way and returned. The king does not persuade him a lot, but he knows the truth. But again, the devil is not, does not surrender. He does something else. This is fatal. Look at it. In verses 11. Now, there are God and all prophets. In Bethel, and his sons, the old prophet did not know because the old prophet was a diviner. He can hear God, he can hear the devil. He was a diviner. So by this time, he did not know what was happening here. The presence of God was so much on the man of God from Judah that the, these evil prophets were brought from understanding what is happening. So he does not know, but his sons. And so the drama, they saw it, I think they saw it on news, on, on 7 p.m. prime news, prime news at 7 p.m. They saw it, and they said that the father in verse 11, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken at the king, and they told also to the father. They said to him everything that has just happened. That the man of God is working miracles, signs, and what is anointed, and he's just a young man. My God. And the father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen him the way the man of God went, which came from Judah. The sons had seen. The young men who they are just going to pray food for them, or a chest of pira pira, and break up by sky bar, he went this way. And he said that to his sons, sandal the ass. So they sandaled his ass and he rode off. He now follows the man of God, verses 14, and went after the man of God and found him sitting under the oak. The man of God was exhausted. Maybe he was wondering why God has not told him to have some lunch. He was exhausted. Take care when you are exhausted. drained and exhausted. That is when the devil comes. When you are exhausted spiritually, when you can't pray, you can't fast, you can't seek the Lord. So he finds this man sitting under, where, which, which verse am I? Under the oak, and he said unto him, I thought the man of God that came down from Judah, and he, he said again, I am. He is telling this man the truth. I'm not saying you lie, I'm saying you be wise. Don't tell everybody everything. The Bible says it is the pressure of the king to conceal a matter. That is what the Bible says. Yes. 
it is the it is the pleasure of a king to conceal a matter. That is what the Bible tells us. When the king conceals a matter, that is his pleasure. You must conceal some matters, child of God. Don't tell them everything. Are you the man of God that came from Judah? Yes, I am. What for? You need to ask them why. Why are you asking? Me like that. He said, I Don't am. Answer straight questions. Don't answer straight questions. And he said to him, come home with me and eat bread. The second, the same, same temptation repeated now the second time. The king said, come and eat. He said, I can't. Now the man of God is here. He tells you, come and eat. Many people have been misled by men of God. Because people believe that men of God are just, they are righteous, they hear from God. Even when he says, God spoke to me, that you should leave your wife, your husband, you were made to be my wife. Mama anafunga virago, anawaja buwanake, anayenda kwa pasta. Because the man of God, and I say, man, God said, this is exactly what is happening here. Can't you see what is happening here, child of God? He said, I may not return with thee, nor go with thee. Again, it is the same, same mistake. He said the first time, verse 17, for it was said to me by the word of God, he tells everything that I shall not eat, not drink, no water there, no turn at the same, way, uh, the same way thou camest. Look at verses 18. This is a game changer. The game changer that will bring a man of God down, that will bring your presence, that will, that will send away the ark of the covenant from you. This is a game changer. What does the old prophet say? He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. That is a game changer of everything. That is what changed the mind of the man of God that had just done miracles, signs, and wonders. Because the prophet said, I am a prophet just like you are. I'm also a prophet like you. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And now all the weapons. The man of God from Judah was having against every demonic powers, against Jezebel, I mean against Jeroboam, against the wicked kings to attack the altars, to destroy them. He put all of them down. I'm sorry. Oh, oh my God. You are a prophet? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh God. Oh my God. Am I speaking to a prophet? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Put all the weapons down. Oh yes. And the angel spake unto me. Look at it. He lies. The angel came and spoke to me and by the word of the Lord say, bring him back with thee into thine house that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. He lies to the man of God that the angel appeared to me and said to me to come and fight you and bring you back so that you may eat and drink. That is why you are exhausted. The angel of God saw the way you are exhausted. The angel of God saw the way you are devastated. This is the angel of the Lord. But the man of God heard from the Lord. The man of God heard from the Lord, not from the angel. The man of God from Judah was ordered by God not to eat or drink, neither to return the same way he shall he came. But thou now. This man says, the angel of God. Who will you respect? Whom will you honor? The angel of God. God. If it comes from the Lord, disregard all others as noisemakers. If God says, do not go this way. Even if a bishop with a big collar says, you can go this way. Do not. Do not. If God say promiscuity, immorality, adultery is bad, even if with my big collar and with my good English tell you there is no problem about it, do not regard my speech. Eh? Yeah. Do not regard any statement. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Look at it at Transfiguration. The Bible says in the Transfiguration mountain there, Jesus carries Peter, John, and James to the mountain. And then while they are there, a mighty miracle happens. Elijah appears, Moses appears on the other side. And they begin to converse with the man of God, with the son of God. This is my beloved son. He loves his son, you told us. Yes. And they are conversing. And all of a sudden, because Peter was tired, they wake up from the sleep. And they realize there are three more, two more men 
They are speaking with my Lord. Who are they? Who do they think they are? Come on, who do these people think they are? And he says to the Lord, let me address you, Jesus. Give me permission. I will build a house for you, for Elijah and for Moses. Three houses. Don't bother about us. We shall be sleeping outside. We have no problem. Pride. We don't mind sleeping outside. We regard you as men of God. As Peter was speaking, the Bible says, a writer disappeared. Moses disappeared. They are bringing distraction. <laughs> disappear. Disappear. Jesus is left alone. And there is a voice from heaven. It says like this. This is my beloved son. In whom? In whom I well priest. Forget about Elijah. Forget about Moses. Hear him. Hear him. What is he saying? Even if Moses was in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights speaking, and when he came out, he had a face that was shining. If he tells you anything that my son has not told you, this is the he. This is Elijah. He calls fire from heaven. Pass a sacrifice, whatever, in Mount Carmel. If he tells you anything that my son does not approve, disregard it. This is my son. In him I'm all priest. Hear him only. Don't hear them. Hear him. This is what God is telling us right now. Hear my son. Hear my son. My son Jesus Christ. I am priest with him. Elijah did not bring the reference of the nations. Moses did not save us. Joshua did not save us. His son will save us. Amen. Hear him. Hear him. Amen. Hear him. Amen. Do not hear the voice of the old prophet. Yes. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Jesus. The man now is cornered. He went back with him and did eat and drink. He did a mistake. He lost the ark, verses 20. And it came to pass as they sat at the table, the word now of the Lord. Are you seeing? The word of the Lord. Not the word of the angel. Right. Now, the word of the Lord came unto this old prophet saying, Where am I? He cried, 21. 21. He cried down. Said unto the Lord, For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, it has not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but thou camest back and has eaten and drunk the praise uh, the which the Lord did say unto thee, it no bread and drink no water thy carcass shall now come unto the shepherd of thy fathers think to pass as he lived now the man is a diviner he hears the devil he hears god this time round god speaks to him it is not the angel it is the lord the lord said to him tell him now because you disobeyed the lord and you came back the same mouth double tongue double tongue the man has wrought the presence of God because of disobedience. Disobedience is the first cause of us losing the presence of God. Disobedience. Uh -huh. Disobedience. Yes. When you disobey what the Lord says, when you disobey the word of the Lord, when you disobey what he says in his word, what does the word of God say? Thou shalt not commit adultery. When you commit it, you are disobeying. You don't have the presence of God. You shall not steal. When you steal, somebody stole your money. When you steal somebody's money, you shall be without the presence of God. What does the Bible say? Love your neighbor as yourself. As you love each other, you are committing the word of God. If you disobey, you are now becoming a man without the presence of God. Whatever the word of God says to you, that is what you should do. He loses the presence of God, and the man says, the old prophet says, now your carcasses will sleep with your fathers at the Shabbatans. That is exactly what happened. Child of God, I have taught you the word of God today. I read the one as he was leaving. Mules came. They captured him. Wakamurarua. He was buried in the forest. This mighty man of God lost the ark of the presence. A ark of a covenant, the presence of God. We shall not lose Amen. the presence oh, of the Lord. We shall not lose the presence of the Lord. Amen. We shall not lose the presence of God. 
Forgive us where we have disobeyed. Where we have disobeyed, forgive us, Almighty God. Forgive our disobedience. We have disobeyed you. Forgive us, O oh God. Let me conclude this message by giving you three mighty blows. These are punches. A blow. Conclusion blows. I'm happy to finish this message. And I know this message has opened doors for me. Amen. Mighty things have happened. Amen. And now as I conclude it successfully today, yes. I thank God I have said what he told me to tell you. Amen. I have taught you conclusively into detail. Yes. Laboring in the word of God yes. to break the bread to you into small pieces. Amen. I have done it faithfully. Amen. May the Lord bless each one of the hearer. Amen. And uh, bless me also because Amen. I spoke it. Jesus. Three conclusive bros. One, Moses bro. Moses says bro. Moses punched the blow of Moses. The bro of Moses. What is the bro of Moses? Exodus 3.15. <laughs> that is the bro of Moses. Okay. As regards the Ark of the Covenant. The Bible says, Exodus 33.15 And he said unto him, If your presence goes not with me, carry us not out of heads. Amen. Carry us not out. up heads. Yeah. Don't take us out of here. Moses is crying to God. And he says to God, If your ark does not go with me, if your presence does not go with me, do not remove me from here. How many times have you gone without the presence? How many times have you gone without the presence to make your friend happy? Moses is giving you a bro today and telling you why are you going without the presence of God. You are receiving a big bro, a mighty bro from Moses. And he's saying, why did you go without the presence? There's a fast bro you are receiving from the Lord. <laughs> And this is coming from Moses. A very hot trap you are receiving today from Moses. It's asking him, Apostle Franco, why did you go without the presence? And I told God that if you does not go with me, do not take me from here. And God said, my presence will go with you. My presence will go with you. If you read down there, the Bible says, God said to Moses, my presence will go with you. He receives a confirmation and therefore Moses is ready to go. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, why did you go we without the presence? Why? 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 Receive that bro. Tell your neighbor, receive that bro from receive Moses. Hallelujah. Bro number two is David's bro. Will you receive all of them today or just the one? Yeah. David's bro. David is going to slap somebody today and give him your, give him a blow. 51, 11 of Psalms. Look at him. In Psalms 51 verses 11. After he has sinned with Bathsheba. After he has slept with that woman. Is it? After he has slept with that woman. And God is about to kick him. And to take away his presence. He tells God. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. That's another bro. This bro comes to you when you sin and you refuse to repent. You refuse to ask God for forgiveness. That is the bro you receive from David for allowing God to take his presence. Why are you allowing God to take his presence? Repent! And ask God that he may help you to retain the presence. Repent. Repent your sins. Repent your wickedness. Repent your wickedness. Repent that you slept with that girl. Repent that you, take, you took that cigarette. Repent that you lied. Repent today. Otherwise the slap coming from David is so hot today. David says, Cast me not away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Amen. He is praying to the Lord. He is asking the Lord, restore me. Do not take away your presence from me, Lord. Do not take away from your presence. Why are you, oh God, going away from me? 
Do not take your Holy Spirit. Do not remove me from your holy place, from your presence. Let me not go far away from you. When you do a sin, when you commit that sin, it is time to go before God and ask the Lord, do not remove me from your presence. Do not remove my name from the book of life. Do not take away your Holy Spirit. Do not take away your power. Do not take away your ark from me. Oh God. The ark of the covenant. Oh, yes. David says, I don't mind losing my kingdom. I don't mind losing my, 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 my friends. I don't mind losing the, the armies. I am afraid of losing your presence. Oh if the Holy Spirit is out of my life, what am I? What am I? What am I? What am I without your presence? Cast me not away from your presence, O oh God, and take not your Holy Spirit from me, O oh God. And that prayer was answered. Wow. God restored David. Jesus. He restored him. Restored. And David, mm. I believe, sat for many other years, maybe 10 or 20 years yes. after this. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. If you repent your sins, yes. he is faithful and just to forgive you all yes. unrighteousness. Amen. He is faithful. But if you say you have no sin, you make him a liar. And truth is not in you. That is what the Bible says. Yes. We are not pretending to be righteous. We want God to make us holy men of God. Amen. We want God to forgive our sins. Amen. Forgive us for more unrighteousness. Yes. I don't want to take that very hard blow from David. Saying, why are you allowing the devil to torment you and to torture you? Because you sinned. His grace is sufficient. His blood is enough Amen. to wash you. Amen. Therefore, you should not run away from the presence of God. Neither should the Lord take His presence, His Holy Spirit from you. Amen. Do not allow the Lord to take away His presence. Yes. Do not allow the Lord. As I stand in this altar today in the name of Jesus, I am a servant of God. I lift my hands towards you and I declare Amen. all your sins are forgiven. Amen. All your sins are forgiven. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. All your sins are forgiven. Amen. All your sins are forgiven. Amen. Oh, he has given him a hand clap. He has forgiven you today. Amen. He has forgiven you today. Amen. I wave my hand as I wave offering over your lives, over your jobs, over your families. Amen. I wipe out every sin from your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Amen. John chapter 20 verse 23. Yes. Whoever you shall forgive their sins, their sins are forgiven. Whoever sins you shall retain, their sins are retained. I remove your sins from your life. In the name of Jesus. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. In Jesus name. Give me Jesus a hand clap today. You are forgiven. I am forgiven. We are forgiven. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The third bro is from our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Jesus is about to give you a very hot one. It depends on how you behave. Matthew 27, 46. Oh, yes. The Bible says about the ninth hour. Jesus cried with a loud voice. Say, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This is Jesus, the son of man, the son of God. Of course, he's the son of God and the son of man. A hundred percent. Jesus was not 50-50. He was not 50% man and 50% God, making it a hundred percent. No, he was a hundred percent God in another office. He is a hundred percent man. And on the cross, he looked for the first time. God was turning his back. Because of your sins and your sins and my sins. They were all upon Jesus. And God cannot look onto sin approval. with approval. approval. He can never approve any sin. Whoever commits it, Jesus, we know he never committed it, but we committed the sins that took him on the cross. When the Father looked at Jesus for the first time in history, he turned his back 
He cannot look on to sin, even if it is on his son, and he turned his back. That is when Jesus was watching his father, and for the first time he saw the back of a father. He had never seen the back of his father again before or after. On that, like two seconds, and Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabbatani, my God, my God, why are you forsaking me? Right. He's crying and he's saying, Why are you taking your presence from me? Two seconds are enough for me to die. Why? Why? By the time Jesus was turning, the father was turning to look at who cried, he knocked him and killed Jesus on the spot. Because of those sins. The father turned to see who cried and he knocked his son. And his son, the Bible says, he cut his ghost. He died. My father, do not forsake me. Even if I have sinned, grace me, Lord. He, I want to retain your presence. I want to retain your presence. Do not forsake me. Do not forsake me, Lord. Do not forsake me, Lord. Oh, Lord, do not forsake me. Forsake not us, Lord. We may have done what is not right. Do not allow us to go without your presence. Do not allow us to go without your presence. We are before you today. Do not forsake us, our God. Do not forsake us. Wipe us and cry, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We repent before you and ask you to forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us. My Father, my God, why are you forsaking me? Do not forsake me. I have done what is not right. I have released the act of a covenant. I have, I have carried their sins on my shoulders. Do not cast me away from your presence because... I have borne their sins on my necks. I pray today in the name of Jesus. Grace me. Grace me, Lord. Grace me, Lord. Hello, hello, Lama Sabatanai. Do not kill me. Do not finish me. I am just dust. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to grace me. I ask you, my Father, to forgive my sins. I ask you to make me a righteous man of God. I ask you to make me a holy man of God. I receive that blow of Moses, that blow of David. And now, as we have received the blow of Jesus, I will not allow the Ark of the Covenant to be taken away from me again. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, help us, help us. Help me, help me, help me, Lord, to retain the presence of God. The presence of God. The presence of God. Hallelujah! Oh,